Hey guys, Ry123 here again, and today we're going to be doing another tutorial. And today's suggestion comes from Laura, and she would like to know how to make a teleport script. So we are going to do that now. Well, like a teleporter. So we are going to do that now. Okay guys, so go ahead and open up Roblox Studio, and the first thing you're going to do is insert two bricks it doesn't matter what just that there's two of them put one of them by your spawn and put one of them just like anywhere else so first thing go to and grab both of them by clicking on the first one then holding control and clicking on the second one see they're both selected then group them together then rename the model teleport Ports. Name the block by your spawn, Telly1, and the other block, Telly2. Sorry guys, when you name your teleporters, put no space between the number and the word. Then, inside each of these, you're going to need two things. We're just going to put it in one though, because we'll just copy paste. You're going to need a script and some, this bool, bool value. Close out that script for a second. Rename the bool value to enabled and change its value to true. Just check the box. A bool value is a value that holds like true or false. So the is the box checked or not checked? So we're going to set up three, three, four. Ah, uh, yeah, four variables here. So we're going to say local telly equals script dot parent, which is just the teleporter one. We're gonna say local des is script dot parent dot parent dot telly two and if we follow that that's script dot parent dot parent dot telly two so that's our destination next we're going to need local um let's just put e equals script dot parent dot enabled that's this bool value then next, we're going to need local e2, which is script dot parent. Well, let's just say des dot enabled, because we're going to put another one in here in a minute. Okay. After you've got all your variables set up, go ahead and make a on touched function with the p, like always. Go ahead and set up what I like to call a connection statement. That right? Yeah. So that it knows when the part got touched. Okay. First thing you're going to type here is if e dot value equals tr double equals sign true then hit enter. So I'm going to go through each line as we type them, don't worry. E is our enabled boolean value, remember. Dot value is its value property equals true. Then this script will come in here and do whatever we put in between this if and end. So since it is true because we checked that checkbox, it's going to come in here and it's going to say E dot value equals false so we're going to set it to false and I'll tell you why we're doing that in a second when we get closer to the end of the script we are also going to say um are we gonna do that yeah e2 dot value e value equals false Okay, then we are going to do another if statement, 
remember E2 is the enabled we're going to put in our destination teleporter. Then we're going to say if p dot parent dot find or what's this called a semicolon a colon find first child in quotations humanoid just like that then oh sorry is not equal to nil then hit enter so to get this squiggly line first of all you're gonna hold shift and push the button above your tab key you'll you should be able to see it it's right above the single quotation mark um what this line is saying is if p dot parent dot five first so p is set here and p is the part that touches the teleporter so let's say your right arm touched the teleporter then right arm would or I mean P would mean right arm so P dot parent if you remember our John over here let's just use him as an example so let's say his one of his parts touched it so it's gonna say let's say this part touched it so this is now P so P dot parent semicolon find first child means it looks for the same thing with the name humanoid the the first thing with the name humanoid basically all that means is is it's looking to see if the thing that touched the block is a person like an actual player and if it isn't then it won't do anything that's basically all that's doing um we're going to say we're going to set up another variable here local player equals game dot players find first child let me move my mouse p dot parent dot name okay what this is doing is we're setting up a new variable and its value is in the players um, service of the game and what it's looking for is basically the player whenever you jo whenever someone joins a game they go in here like all their leader stats and stuff so we'll learn more about players when we do like leaderboards and leader stats and other stuff but for now all you need to know is that this is just getting the player so that we can move him then you're gonna say player dot character I think that's how you spell character semicolon move to and then we're gonna say desk dot position okay all this does is it moves the player that touched it to the second teleporter that's it then that's all that's our teleport script but then we have to come in here after the end and we have to say wait let's do one and we're going to re-enable both of our enabled booleans oops equals true oh my gosh and why we're doing this so this first e this first enabled thing it just makes it so that like if one person goes on the teleporter then another person has to wait one second before they can use it so that you don't spam the teleporter and break it the second the E2 makes it so that as soon as you teleport and step on the other teleporter it won't teleport you back that can be a big problem so close out of that script go ahead and copy both these things and paste them into the second teleporter go back into the second teleporter script and we're just going to change this the destination to teleporter one or tele one now let's go ahead and test our game okay so we're going to go ahead and wait for our thing to load and we're going to try out our teleporters
and as you can see they work we teleport back and forth we have to wait one second before we can use it again but it works so um, I know that was a lot to sink in um, but thanks for watching anyways I hope you found it helpful and I hope you know now know how to make teleporters for your game and just in case you're asking yourself like why can't I just free model this crap um, honestly whenever I play a game one of the things and I know it bugs most people too is free models um, it, it's just really unprofessional if you don't make your own stuff I'm not calling it like stealing but it looks better for your game if you if you can say on the description or whatever like everything in this game was made by me um just because that makes you look like you actually took time to do it and scripting is a great skill to learn no matter if you do it for roblox or game development so this can just kind of teach you some of the basics of scripting like today we learned functions we learned how to tell if what's touching something is a player so let's say if I chucked a brick on this just randomly it wouldn't teleport because it's not a player but we will because we are a player and we learned about the move to function um, which can be useful if you're making like teleporters or mini games where you want to teleport everyone to a certain arena and um, I think that's it for this tutorial um, be sure to leave a comment about any more scripts that you'd like to see be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and are going to go make a teleporter right now just kidding you don't have to I just did this so to help you in case you ever need one which is probably why you're looking up this video um, if you did and be sure to subscribe for more tutorials I try to come out with at least one or two a week um, thanks for watching bye